Hey everyone, I'm T.M. Sparrow, writer and homeschooling mom, and today I'm going to tell you about the books that have shaped me as a writer. Reading is an important aspect of any writer's life. After all, it's our love of stories that put us on this path to begin with. I mean, we're certainly not in it for the money, and if you are, you might want to do a little more research on that. I've loved books and words for as long as I can remember, from One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, to more recent grown-up favorites such as Jenna Moretzi's The Savior's Champion and Aaron Kinsella's Heart and Soul. Books are fuel for the writer's mind, and every book that I've read has impacted me in one way or another, from writing inspiration, to education, to, oh, okay, this is what I don't want to do. I don't remember every book I've read. I mean, I'm 32 and I've been reading since I was like four, so that's a lot of books. However, there are some books that have left such a strong impression that I still remember them years later. Of those books, these ten are the ones that I feel have had the most impact on me as a writer. Number one, The Raging Quiet. I don't remember when I first read this book, but I do remember that I read it many times over throughout high school. Now, I haven't read this book since high school, and I graduated more years ago than I care to admit, but I still remember this book and the strong impact it had on me. I remember Marnie and Raven and the love that they shared. I remember Marnie's trauma and how she was the only one who paid enough attention to realize that Raven wasn't crazy or possessed. He was deaf. This book is a historical romance and it is a young adult book that deals with some pretty heavy themes. I still remember the way this book made me feel. It was beautiful and evocative. This book makes me want to write a book that stays with people the way this book has stayed with me. Number two, Ella Enchanted. I read Ella Enchanted around the same time that I read The Raging Quiet and for a long time they were both tied for my favorite book. If you've seen my favorite female characters video, then you might remember that Ella made that list. This book was so much fun. There's adventure and romance, there's conflict, drama, and humor. It's the kind of book that really draws you into the story and doesn't let you go. It's another one that I've read multiple times and still think about from time to time. This copy is technically Ava's because I want to share it with her. This book really helped to solidify my love of fantasy and fairy tale retellings especially. Number three, Moon Called. Okay, finally, something grown up. Moon Called is a book that Drake introduced me to. You're welcome! And I'm so glad he did. It completely changed my views on vampires and werewolves and urban fantasy in general. If you remembered Ella from my favorite female characters video, then you probably remember Mercy Thompson too. The way Patricia Briggs uses traditional lore but also builds on it and makes it her own is a huge inspiration for me. It made me realize how much possibility there is in urban fantasy, and at the risk of being one of those people, the contrast between these books and the Twilight series made me realize just how far you can bend the traditional lore. 
I don't think my Children of Remus series would be what it is without this book's influence. Number four, The Hobbit. When you're talking about the fantasy genre, Tolkien is going to come up at some point, and there's a good reason for that. The Lord of the Rings is a classic, a staple of the genre, and Tolkien really changed the game with his epic world building. And yet, I found the core trilogy to be a slow read full of unnecessary description and exposition. The first time I tried to read it, I couldn't even get all the way through The Fellowship of the Ring. And then I read The Hobbit. And it's so, so good. It has actually become my all-time favorite book so far. I have learned so much about world building from Tolkien, and every time I read this book, I find something new to love and to learn. Number five, the Dark Elf Trilogy. Ari Salvatore is another favorite author of mine. His books are full of amazing characters and creatures. While Salvatore didn't create the Drow per se, he was given free reign to flesh out what few details existed in the Dungeons and Dragons guidebooks. What he created is amazing and has so much depth. These were the first truly adult fantasy books I enjoyed, but they aren't the only books of his that I've enjoyed either. Salvatore is a master of world building, and his fight scenes are second to none. As you can tell, there's a lot to learn from his books. Number six, Harry Potter. Yeah, I know, it's kind of basic to love Harry Potter anymore, and J.K. Rowling isn't the role model we had believed in. But it's hard to deny the impact these books had on my generation. They made readers of so many children and gave us a world that still feels like home to many of us. This level of success, this kind of cultural impact, is like the ultimate author dream. It's something many of us dream of, but we'll probably never see. There's a lot to learn from the writing, though. Snappy dialogue, amazing and realistic characters. This is the series that I would probably credit with solidifying my dream of being an author. If nothing else, however, it introduced me to the world of fan fiction, where I began to hone my craft and discovered the joy of sharing my work with readers. Number seven, Edgar Allan Poe. I know this list is supposed to be books, and this is an author, but I've loved Poe's works from a pretty young age, which kind of explains a lot, actually. My first introduction was The Telltale Heart in elementary school, if I'm remembering correctly, and I was hooked. From short stories to poems, Poe has had a significant influence on my writing style. The drama and darkness still appeal to me, even though I'm long past my angsty teenage years. Annabelle Lee will forever be my favorite poem. And that sort of melancholy romance still flavors a lot of my ideas. Asylum is a dark urban fantasy, and I'm pretty sure we have Poe to thank for that. Number eight. Aragon. Ah, uh, Aragon. I have such a complex relationship with this book, or rather with the entire inheritance cycle. If this were a list of my favorite books, this one wouldn't even make the cut, but it had a huge impact on my love of dragons. I haven't read it in years, so I can't speak to the quality of the writing, but this is the book that launched my love of Dragon Rider stories. I do remember loving this book, but I also remember not being able to finish the series. 
In another video, I mentioned that I have a book series in the planning stages that was partially inspired by my dissatisfaction with other Dragon Rider series. Well, this series is the biggest culprit, so at least it has that going for it. Number 9. Howl's Moving Castle. This book is one of those rare occasions where I actually saw the movie first. It's a Studio Ghibli classic and a movie that I still love. The book has so much more depth though, and I'm so glad that I discovered it. The structure is a bit different from most stories, focusing much more on Sophie's inner journey than the external conflict of dealing with curses. It's a book that I've enjoyed more than once, and I highly recommend the audiobook because the narrator is fantastic. Honestly, if you want to learn about developing characters, then this is a great book to read. Number 10. Wicked. Honestly, I would consider Wicked to be a modern classic. It's a book I've read more than once, and one I keep buying because my copies seem to keep disappearing. I love the way Gregory Maguire reimagined the Wicked Witch, and the way he tied characters together. Wicked is one of my all-time favorites, and I might not have discovered it if it weren't for my love of Broadway musicals. The book is incredibly different from the musical, of course, but the storytelling is so masterful. The writing is evocative, and the characters are just so real. This book makes me think, and that's something I dream of doing in my own work. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. You can let me know what books have impacted you in the comments down below. Or you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And if you want to see more, then don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos on Sundays. See you next time. And through the magic of editing, number one. The Raging Quiet. This is not the Raging Quiet because we're just practicing. Defying gravity. Flying high, defying gravity. <laughs> Number four. Number four. The Hobbit. I don't know why the Hobbit is green. <laughs> Elves gone wild. <laughs> Oh, no way, that's something different. My bad. Number six. Harry Potter. <laughs> Number eight. Aragon. Backwards again. You are do not. There is no try. <laughs> that's literally what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not careful, I'll start reading. Number three. Moon called. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Finally, so no, I don't need to go back that far. Oh my god. <laughs> AKA the section of the script where I try to avoid saying the main character's name as much as possible. Aragon. Nah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You should try. Dragon! You should move your hand up a little. No one minds the wicked.